Hello, lovelies. You're listening to episode 38 of the Broken Enchantments podcast, written and read by Elizabeth Wheatley. That's me. I hope you enjoy this week's episode. Be sure to check out my Patreon for next week's episode, now available. You can check out the links below. Happy listening! She wasn't sure how far they had gone, only that her hands had gone numb and she couldn't feel the tips of her ears or her nose. It was hard to gauge distance when they were moving through the milky darkness, but Janir guessed they had covered a mile and a half, maybe two. A white form swooped at them from above, soundless as the frost. Janir had hardly registered the sight when hooked talons the size of dinner knives sank into the horse's neck. The animal let off an unearthly scream of terror and thrashed wildly, sending Janir and Carl flying and skidding into the gravel. Blinding terror dulled the sensation of pain, and Janir scrambled away from the squealing horse, dragging Carl by his robe as fast as she could. The predator lifted the horse off the ground by several sword lengths and slammed it into the rock above. There was the sickening crunch of bone as the impact shattered ribs and fractured limbs. The horse was still screaming when the predator finally tore the poor animal's throat out, nearly decapitating it. Janir shuddered as the horse's body thudded to the ground. Karyl gasped and gaped, sharing her horror. They tried to remain as still as possible, their backs pressed against the rock. The predator descended and landed near the horse's mangled carcass, and they saw it clearly for the first time. Its body was slightly smaller than that of the horse it had just killed though when it spread its wings, it seemed many times that size. It had the head and front end of a white owl, barred with narrow rows of black speckles, seamlessly blended into the powerful back end of a white lion marked with black stripes. The white of the frost griffin's coat was as pale as untouched snow, and the black was dark as the heart of a demon. Streaks of scarlet stained the creature's talons and feathery chin. Its feathers looked so soft so downy. It seemed so unfitting for a beast as fierce. The frost griffin didn't caw. It didn't so much as hiss. But in a moment, three more of the creatures, one slightly larger, two of them noticeably smaller, descended on the horse's corpse. The two matured frost griffins sat back on their muscular haunches and watched as the smaller two tore at the dead horse's flesh. It must have been a mating pair in their hatchlings. In that instant, watching the young frost griffins shred the horse's body. Being taken to her father suddenly didn't seem so bad. Janir shuddered and looked away. Karyl gripped her arm like a vice, staring toward the four griffins and their kill. She followed his gaze to meet the bright orange, almost glowing eyes of the largest griffin. The creature had a voice like an ice-laden breeze, soft and yet so cold it made Janir shiver. And what are the names of our toothpicks? What were they supposed to do? They couldn't have fought off one of the griffins, much less a mating pair. Janir tried to pull herself together, but so long as she held the gaze of those yellow and hate-filled eyes, she couldn't concentrate. The second largest frost griffin, the one that had attacked and killed the horse, spoke. Janir assumed that it was a female by its size and higher voice. They are both young. Kill them quickly. Would the mortals spare our cubs if they trespassed in one of their realms? The largest frost griffin countered. No. They take our cubs captive and sell them as amusements to wealthy pigs covered in colored rocks. The male prowled toward them with a swaggering feline stride. His beaked face leaned toward them. I asked, what are your names? Why would he care? He planned to eat them. It was Karyl who gathered his courage first. I'm Karyl. Janir swallowed before answering. Janir. The male swiveled his head around, and those unmoving, piercing orange eyes bored into hers for a moment before he hissed. An Argitalum, even if you don't look like one. He spoke the name of her race deliberately, menacingly. Your people are the cruelest of all. You hurt our cubs, 
cause them pain so that you may have their tears to make your accursed stinging sticks. As suddenly as the first frost griffin had swooped down upon the horse, a shriek split the air to stab at Janir's ears. The frost griffins reeled in pain, staggering as drunkards. Janir had heard that sound before. It was the noise of two carcotton being scraped against each other. Janir and Karel covered their ears and struggled to keep the noise out. The frost griffins soon couldn't stand it. They took to the air, hissing, snarling, and faded away into the murky darkness of the sky. Janir and Karel both sank to the ground and leaned against the rocks, breathing deeply. Cerulius and Amilla must be close, but Janir was basking in relief for the moment. A moment later, Cerulius's dark figure marched out of the gloom and hauled Janir to her feet. He pulled her toward him, face a dark shadow in the scarce light. What did I tell you would happen if you tried that again? He slapped her, hard. Janir was knocked to the ground, lying on her stomach in the snow. She didn't move. She was afraid that if she moved, she might lose what little courage she had left and break down crying. Hey! Kyle indignantly shouted. Before he could say anything else, Amilla came up behind him and clubbed Kyle on the back of the head with her carcotton. The strike was so fast, the carcotton didn't even shriek. Karel! Janir screamed, scrambling toward his prostrate form. Cerulius caught her and hauled her upright, lashing her hands together yet again. Janir kicked and struggled. Don't kill him, she begged. Please! Why shouldn't we? Cerulius demanded. The Lord Argatolum only ordered us to bring you alive. Amilla knelt down beside the enchanter's prone form and prepared to drive her carcotton into the back of his neck. He had the chance to kill you, Janir cried. Amilla paused and looked up at Cerulius. Did he now? Cerulius skeptically queried. And when was that? Back in the cave. When you two were asleep. Both Amilla and Cerulius curled their lips. They would not want reminding that they had slept through her escape. He took your hunting knife from your saddlebags, but he didn't use it on you. He just freed me and helped me escape. Please. Janir panted. Please. Swain of yours? Cerulius wondered. Janir couldn't help the sudden indignation. By the unnamed, no. No, just... My self-appointed best friend. Hmm, Cerulius said contemplatively. Well, I suppose we could use him to keep her in line, he suggested to Amilla. Kill him if she acts out again? Amilla nodded, considering that idea. And we can always kill him once we deliver her to the Lord Argatolum. Cerulius turned to Janir. Very well, your wish is granted. He will live. For now. With that, Cerulius shoved Janir back in the direction of the cave. Amilla dragged Carl after them. A short distance back into the fog, they came to the Argatolum's horses, fully saddled and uneasy at the smell of their former companion's blood. They would have heard his squeals of distress, too. Amilla slung Kyle over the front of her saddle, the way Cerulius had slung Janir the night before. Cerulius tied a rope to Janir's bonds and led her behind his horse. Janir trudged behind Cerulius's horse all the way back to the cave, not feeling any of her extremities by the time Cerulius shoved her where she had been before. They tied Kyle at the opposite end of the fire, without the luxury of a heavy mantle like the one they gave Janir. This time, the two Argatolums took turns standing watch pointless. Totally pointless. And now Carl was a prisoner, too. Janir eventually went back to sleep, but slumber held only nightmares for her. You have been listening to Broken Enchantments, written and read by Elizabeth Wheatley. Don't forget to check out my Patreon for early access to episodes, bonus content, and lots of patrons-only freebies. You can learn more at elizabethwheatley.com. And don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform, or YouTube. I'll see you next time.